Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live 10 at 10. It's not the greatest, it's not safe, it's not healthy. Tattoos have been popular for a long time, but trying to cut corners to save money could be costly to your health. Fargo Cast Public Health issued a warning today about an increased risk of contracting HIV or hepatitis if body art procedures like tattoos are done by unlicensed artists. Valley News Team's Molly Casey visited a local body art shop to find out what it takes to be licensed and what you should watch out for. They become a permanent part of who you are. But before getting inked, it's important to know who's behind the needle. You can do all kinds of research online on establishments that are, that are tattooing, but I think the most important is actually going and checking it out yourself. Trent Balvich has been a licensed tattoo artist for over 16 years and says he's seen his share of homemade tattoos. We fix a lot of those, actually. But some side effects of illegal body art procedures aren't so easily fixed. The Fargo Cass County Health Department released a warning today after reports of individuals being infected with HIV or hepatitis from illegal body art procedures. People think they know what they're doing and find out it's a lot harder than, than what they think. Artists must pass CPR and bloodborne pathogen courses, be vaccinated for hepatitis B, and have hours logged in a licensed shop. You, you do have a few steps that you have to take before you can actually become a licensed artist. Each body art shop also has to apply for and maintain a license through the Fargo Cass County Health Department and officials do stop by for surprise compliance checks. Keeps people on their toes, make sure that you know every, they can come in every day so you're prepared every day for it. Artists or establishments found out of health department compliance or without licensing can face up to $1,000 in fines. And while body art like tattoos is costly, so are the risks of getting it done illegally. From Fargo, Molly Casey, Valley News Live. If you have any information on any suspected unlicensed tattoo artists, you should contact your local law enforcement. You don't have to be an industry analyst to see that gas prices in the area are getting lower and lower. But where can you find it the cheapest? There are plenty of pumps in the FM area that offer $1.92 a gallon. However, if you have a membership to Sam's Club or Costco, that number can go even lower to $1.87 a gallon. You can also use programs like CashWise's More Rewards to shave a few cents off your cost per gallon. The lowest non-membership price we saw today was the Holiday Station off of 32nd Avenue at $1.88. That's 22 cents cheaper than last year's average this time of year and $2.13 lower than Fargo's all-time high. Some Fargo residents had a rude awakening this morning when a parking lot full of cars was hit by a vandal. Police tonight continue to search for the person responsible. Valley News Team's Clint DeRose has more. Rubbing alcohol was a hot commodity in the parking lot for the historic Union apartment complex after a particularly rough morning. Walk outside the building, uh, immediate, immediately notice that some of the vehicles had some writing on them. Fargo police say that at least eight cars in parts of the building were vandalized by someone hoping to spread a message. Working with a moving canvas didn't seem to agree with that. There were a few that were just like a, a random word. Just kind of random thoughts, I guess, of his own. The unwilling participants in this art project were left to deal with the results on top of their usual responsibilities. I was kind of angry. Uh, I was disappointed, but didn't have a lot of time to think about it because I had to get to work. While the temporary headache is definitely annoying, Tenants don't really see this as a big problem going down the road. This would be a super, super rare occurrence. I've never really heard of anything like this happening. Because I really haven't seen this kind of action or this kind of stuff taking place very often around here. As they're seeing firsthand today, uncommon doesn't mean impossible. In Fargo, Clint DeRose, Valley News Live. While vandalism victims did have to spend some extra elbow grease, there was no physical damage reported. Fargo police have not yet released information on a suspect. In tonight's schemes and ripoffs, scammers are once again calling locals impersonating an FM area official. This time, someone is calling and identifying themselves as Moorhead Police Chief David Ebbinger. This exact scam went through Cass County a couple of weeks ago when callers were claiming that they were Sheriff Paul Laney. If you get a call like either of these, call Red River Dispatch at 701-451-7660 to report the incident. 
If you've had enough with telemarketers, scammers, and robocalls, you're not alone. Lisa Grafsgaard from Devil's Lake says she was getting around 20 calls a day from Jamaican numbers, saying her family had won the lottery. They didn't fall for the scam, but others did. These men and women are accused of stealing millions of dollars from Americans. One of the victims from Harvey, North Dakota, was scammed out of $300,000. Grafsgaard couldn't take the calls anymore and signed up for a program through her phone company to screen out telemarketers. It's so hard on your family when the kids answer the phone and they're getting swore at. You don't know what to do. So when this when this phone system um, idea came out, that was the best thing for us. Grafsgaard says there is a charge through her phone company, but says it has stopped all the spam calls, so it's worth it. If you receive any scam calls, you can call us on our whistleblower hotline and we'll get to the bottom of it. Just call 237-6576 and leave your tip. From Washington tonight, Republicans are scrambling to save their Obamacare replacement plan after the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell was forced to postpone this week's planned vote. It comes as senators are likely to face a barrage from constituents back home during their July 4th break. Reporter Casey Hunt has details. After a devastating delay, protests and arrests as Republicans head back into secret negotiations to try and crack a new health care deal by Friday. A last-ditch attempt to transform one-sixth of the economy with just Republican votes. We'll continue working so we can bring legislation to the floor for debate and ultimately a vote. The president today... You could have a big surprise with a great health care package. But after seven years of promising to repeal Obamacare and six months of GOP control of the White House and Congress, a new reality is starting to sink in. If we don't reach agreement by Friday, is probably the end of a sole party effort for health care. Senator John McCain asked if a Friday deal could happen. Yeah, and pigs could fly. McCain is one of several Republican senators already asking for a bipartisan bill. I have said all along that I thought we had, should talk to the Democrats from the beginning. President Trump dismissing overtures from Democratic leader Chuck Schumer. He's done a lot of talking, bad talking, and uh, he just doesn't seem like a serious person. As they head home next week, senators bracing for anger as they try to answer for a bill that only 16% of Americans support, according to a new Quinnipiac poll. Without any Democratic votes, it would only take three Republican no's for the bill to fail. Minnesota law enforcement stepping up efforts to stop drinking and boating in the land of 10,000 lakes. The agencies statewide will increase patrols for intoxicated boaters this weekend as part of Operation Dry Water. It's a national campaign aimed at deterring drinking and boating. The goal of Operation Dry Water is to reduce the number of BWI-related boating accidents and fatalities. The 2017 boating season has been the most deadly since 2005, with nine boating fatalities already recorded. In 2016, alcohol was a factor in nine of 17 deadly boating accidents in Minnesota, and over half of the boating fatalities that year involved alcohol. Mandatory evacuations are taking place in Burbank, California, because of a large brush fire. It broke out on a hillside, and it's moving fast as it lights up dry brush, which in some cases is very close to homes. 60 to 70 homes are under the mandatory evacuation order, while other voluntary evacuations are also taking place. Some streets in the area are closed. The Burbank Police Department is assisting as are fire departments from the city and county of Los Angeles and the Pasadena Fire Department. If the fire spreads too much, it could affect the nearby cities of Pasadena and Glendale. In addition to ground crews, helicopters are dropping water on the blaze. 